Hey guys, welcome to Argument the Podcast, a podcast stage to discuss, deliberate on the contemporary social, legal and political issues. Well, this year marks the 17th year of existence of the Intellectual Property Appellate Board. And in this explanation, we are going to lay down a case for shutting down the IPAB and transferring its powers. Originally set up under the Trademarks Act of 1999 to be our appeals against the trademark registry, as well as certification of petitions against a registered trademark, the IPAB was notified only in the 2003. At the time, the IPAB was basically taking over the powers originally exercised by the High Courts. In the, in the year that followed, the powers of the High Court under the Patents Act and the Copyright Board were also shifted to the IPAB. Nobody really knows why the government created the IPAB because the government has never held a discussion with either general public or the IP bar on whether such a tribunal was ever required. Since its creation, the IPAB has almost never functioned efficiently and the quality of the appointments, say for a few exceptions like the Justice Sri Devan's appointment has not been satisfactory. In its 17 years of experience, the IPAB has not had a chairperson for a cumulative of totally 1130 days. For example, there was a lag of 256 days between the retirement of Justice Jagadishan and appointment of Justice MHS Ansari in 2006. Similarly, there was a gap of 262 days between the retirement of ZS Negi and the appointment of Justice Prabha Sridevan in 2011. Separate from the long gaps in the appointments of the chairpersons of the IPAB is the fact that the IPAB has not had a technical member or a patent since the year 2016. Since the law prescribes a minimum quorum of one judicial member and one technical member to hear any kind of cases, the absence of a technical member of patents has meant that the IPAB has not been able to hear appeals or revocation related to the patents for four years. Similarly, after the functioning of the Copyright Board were merged with the IPAB by the Finance Act of 2017, there has been not been a single appointment of the promised technical members because of which the Copyright Board has been paralyzed and unable to hear several critical compulsory licensing applications. Similarly, there has been no technical member for the trademark matters since December 2018, meaning that the IPAB has lacked quorum to hear even trademark matters for that more than a year. Apart from the vacancies, there is also the issue of quality appointments with the IPAB. As one of the technical members of the trademarks had provided incorrect information on his job application. When asked for trademark cases where he had appeared, he mentioned an English case from 1887. Another technical member for trademarks was appointed despite the wise chairperson objecting to his appointment on the grounds that he lacked in any substantial experience in trademarks matter. Another worrying fact is that most appointments to the post of the technical members or the wise chairpersons were bureaucrats from the Indian Legal Service or the Trademark Registry or the Patent Office. None of them had any experience practicing the law before the court and had never been held prior judicial office. All too often, the bureaucrats on the IPAB have failed to grasp even the basics of the Evidence Act. Separate from the appointments issue are questions related to the lack of infrastructure and resource for the IPAB to function efficiently. For the longest time, the IPAB has had an appalling office in Chennai from where it is used to fly to for circuit hearings in Delhi and Bombay. It later did get a ramshackle office in New Delhi. Since chairpersons are often reluctant to travel, most hearings to travel, most hearings are conducted only in the Delhi or Chennai, thereby increasing the cost of litigants because lawyers end up charging more for outstation hearings. The implications of the dysfunctioning IPAB are severe not just for litigants and the general public, but also the IP bar. This includes delays not only just before the IPAB, but also the High Court and the District Courts, which retain jurisdictions related to the trademark and patent infringement cases. Most of the times, these infringement suits cannot be law proceed until the IPAB decides the revocation or ratification petitions for registered trademark and patents. Delay at the IPAB therefore automatically results in delay before the High Court and the District Courts. Litigants have suffered unnecessarily because of the poor state of affairs of the IPAB and we are quite certain that that has affected the larger economy around IP in India. A dysfunctional IPAB has also severe implications for the general public. 
There is significant public interest attached to the several patent cases that had been here by the IPAB, especially when the patent covers of pharmaceutical drugs whose price who which could be significantly reduced through generic competitions by delaying adjudications of patent revocation petitions pertaining to a patent drug. The IPAB is basically delay delaying the entry of more affordable generic medicines into the market or to the Indian market. Last but not the least, the, IP, the community of the IP litigators has not only also suffered because of the dysfunctioning of the IPAB affects their ability to improve their earnings, making it difficult especially for younger lawyers to break into the big league. The lower house of the Indian parliament, the Lok Sabha introduced a bill that proposed to end certain tribunals and authorities, with the IPAB targeted and proposed for abolition. Despite of fierce backlashes from the local practitioners, the ordinance was promulgated in April with IPAB effectively abolished from that point. Now, barely a few months later, the committee states uh, in relative strong term that the abolishment of the IPAB was a mistake. No, the move should be reconsidered in wake of its pivotal role in education of IPR appeals and cases, it states. Adding to that, the reverse should occur. It should return stronger than ever. The overall scaping of the IPAB with efficiency efficiently had been dealing with proceedings involving complex IPR issues may create a void in appellant resolution of cases leading to their shift to commercial or high courts, thereby increasing the pendency of cases. The committee also op opinions or opines that ordinate delays in appointment of officials at higher levels and the resultant pauses in functioning of the IPAB affect the optimal performance of the IPAB. The committee therefore recommends the government that the IPAB should be re-established rather than being abolished and should be empowered and strengthened with more structural autonomy, infrastructural and administrative reforms as well as ensuring timely appointments of officials and experienced manpower. On top of calling the IPAB to be reviewed, the report appears to criticize the way it was abolished in the first place. The committee notes that with the distress with the absence of any judicial impact assessment or active consultation with stakeholders being conducted by the government prior to the abolishment of the tribunals under the tribunals reforms or the, uh, or the rationalization and conditions of service ordinance 2021, the report notes it strongly recommends that the government before scraping off the significant tribunals through an ordinance should undertake a judicial impact assessment along with wide consultations with relevant uh, stakeholders to ensure building a systematic perspective on abolishing an established system in the country. After the IPAB, the report makes various other recommendations that, if implemented, would be significantly. And these include calling for a general review of IP policy should be undertaken, claiming it is imperative in the wake of new and emerging trends in the spheres of innovation and research, which, which requires a concrete mechanism to protect them as IPRs. Specific legislation to curb counterfeiting and piracy to restrain the growing menace of such IP crimes in India. A key part of that would be determining a method to establish the revenue loss being incurred due to the counterfeiting and piracy at the level of such crimes being committed in India, which would help in the implementing corrective measures to curb the rising incidence of such crimes. Suggestions. Uh, the curtailing of the time period of filing an opp opposition against a trademark application from four to two months or during which the application is in public. On 2nd August 2021, the Finance Minister, uh, Minister Mrs. Um, Nirmala Sida Ram introduced the Tribunals Reforms Bill 2021 in the Lok Sabha, that is the lower court of the parliament as stated above. Uh, the, the, the said bill was identically to the aforementioned ordinance. Uh, the bill passed through the scrutiny, scrutiny of the Lok Sabha on the 3rd August 2021 by the Rajya Sabha uh, on the 9th August and the consequently was enacted as a Tribunals Reforms Act of 2021. Now, the Act received the Honourable President's assent on 13th August 2021. As a result of this enactment, the IPAB is now abolished. Going forward, all appeals against the decisions of the register, Registrar of Trademarks the controller of patents and the registrars of the geographic indications will be to be filed before the High Court instead of the now defunct IPAB.
Likewise, all the appeals against the decisions of the registered registrars of copyrights will now be filled before the commercial courts of the High Court exercising jurisdiction. Further, all appeals, applications, and proceedings which are currently pending before the IPAB shall be transferred to this court respectively. With the abolishment of the IPAB, the Honorable High Court of Delhi has now created an intellectual property division or the IP division. The IP division will now handle all matters related to intellectual property rights filed before the High Court, including but not limited to original and appellate proceedings, IPR suits, revocation and cancellation actions, as well as any appeals from the office of the government. With the abolishment of the IPAB, the Honorable High Court of the Delhi has now created an intellectual property division. The IP division will handle all matters related to the intellectual property rights filed before the High Court, including but not limited to original and appellate proceedings, IPR suits, revocation and cancellation actions as well as any appeals from the Office of Registrar of Trademarks as well as the Controller of Patents. The IP divisions will be governed by the special rules framed for the said purpose. In addition, the original proceedings will also be governed by the Delhi High Court original site uh, rules 2018, the Code of Civil Procedure of 1908 as well as the Commercial Courts Act of 2015. Thank you. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel on YouTube and also follow our Instagram page with regard to regular updates as well.